Hello everyone. Today we will learn some basic programming techniques in PTC MathCAD Prime. Programming is a great way to automate some of the tasks that you perform often. By using conditionals, loops, subroutines, and recursion, it is possible to create custom programs that you can then reference many times throughout your work in MathCAD. To start, we will create a conditional program for thrust. After writing thrust and defining the independent variable, we then insert a program structure by clicking under Programming in the top ribbon. Next, we will define some conditions. When t is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 5, the thrust will be 100. When t is greater than or equal to 5 and less than 20, the thrust will be 80. And if t is any other value, the thrust will be 0. Before creating a new line, it is necessary to hit space to change which layer of the program structure is in focus. We can plot a graph to visualize this thrust program, being sure to adjust the x-axis max value to see the whole thrust profile. If statements can be used for any type of conditional judgments. Another example is creating a program to compute the factorial of a number. In this example, we define the factorial as a function of n and define it as a program. We can use recursion to create an elegant factorial program in four lines. Recursion involves executing the defined program as a subroutine. In some cases, recursion can take much longer to execute than using iterative loops. After defining the behavior of factorials, we can test it out by evaluating the factorial of 6. Next, we will create a program that can return an array of 1s. We start by defining 1s as a function of n, then create a programming structure. The shortcut for a programming structure is the right square bracket. From here, we insert a for statement which automatically adds an element of symbol. i will range from 0 to n minus 1, and will specify that each member of the matrix is equal to 1. Then we can return r as the program output. Let's test this program by creating a 6 member array. Next, we will look at while loops by creating a threshold program. We define threshold as a program with input variables scalar t and vector v. In the program, we assign j to 0, while iterates through each member of the vector v, comparing it to t. If it is less than t, then it proceeds to the next value in the vector. The loop stops when it comes across an element that is greater than threshold t. It then returns the last line of the program, which is the vector containing the index and the value of the first vector element to break the threshold. To test this, let's create a 5-value vector and set the threshold to 5. Then we'll input these variables into our threshold program and see that it stops at the third value, index 2. There are other numbers that break this threshold, but our program stops after the first one, so no other values are considered. Next, we will look at for loops and subroutines by creating a program that can help us empirically approximate the value for pi. The program PiFinder will reference input variable n. Using a program structure, we assign bin to 0, which will serve as the counter of points. We then iterate through values 1 to n, selecting a random x and y value between 0 and 2, which maps to a square on Cartesian coordinates. If this x and y value fit within a circle of radius 1 that is centered around 1 on a Cartesian plane, the pair will be counted in bin. The program returns a ratio of the sum of points landing within the circle divided by the total number of points. Let's define the area of a circle with radius 1 and the area of a square with side length 2. The ratio of the circle over the square should be what we get when we run this program. We can see the exact ratio of this result is pi over the area of the square, or 4. Let's set the number of points to test equal to 700 
and then create a vector of 10 ratios. By summing the values and dividing by the length of the ratio vector, we can take the average and compare it to the exact value calculated previously. Our guess is very close to the exact value, and when we multiply it by the area of the square, we see the guess value for pi. Overall, programs are a great way to perform complex operations multiple times without going through the hassle of retyping everything. If you're familiar with coding in other languages, you can see how the basic structure is the same, although much simplified. Something to consider is that the examples shown here are not very robust. For example, entering a value that is not expected can cause errors and incorrect evaluations. However, there is additional functionality within MathCAD Prime to handle program errors and unexpected input variables. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial of programming in MathCAD Prime. Don't hesitate to reach out to us at Tech30 if you'd like to learn more about programming or just MathCAD in general. Thank you. Have a great day.